Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to be measuring optical density for growth curves. It is currently 9 p.m. on a Wednesday night, such is life. Pretty exciting stuff here in the lab. Uh, basically I have some shake flasks that have been growing for a few days and I've been measuring their optical density about every six hours. And, you know, growth curves are something that is very easy to do, but incredibly difficult to do well, right? So it, the idea is basically you just measure the flask every however many hours. Usually I think it's, it's normal to measure at least once every doubling time. So these cultures should double every six to eight hours on average uh, and you know some variation is fine but basically you want to have maybe like 10 data points within a growth curve maybe i'll put a growth curve up on the screen now so you can see what we're trying to build here and maybe even i'll put my data that i get from this experiment on the screen as well um, so we're going to be using what's called a spectrophotometer to measure the optical density at 600 nanometers or the OD 600. So the spectrophotometer, all it does is shine light through one of these little cuvettes and it measures basically just how much light gets through. If less light gets through, then it's more dense. And if more light gets through, then it's less optically dense, right? Unfortunately, the machine only has a detection range between an OD of 0.1 and 1.2 and those units are sort of arbitrary so whatever uh, but what that means is we need to take our sample and dilute it down so these are the shake flasks uh, we use these sticky pads they're really really useful I need to grab all of these flasks they're all coming with me what these are is a, what I'm trying to do is compare the growth between some single knockouts and wild types. So these are some knockouts from this genome wide screen that I did. And uh, the knockouts should improve growth on a carbon source called acetate. So the media that's in these flasks, the media in these flasks is incredibly minimal media basically just salt water and uh, instead of glucose as the carbon source I added sodium acetate and this is a relatively high concentration of sodium acetate so it should be pretty stressful to the cells except for my beautiful mutants who should be growing better than wild types so as I take these measurements I'll try my best to shut up I really don't want to breathe in anything here, but I'll, I'll do the first two flasks and then I'll explain what I did, okay? Here we go. All right, so I already put 900 microliters of the media, just the plain media in each of these cuvettes, and then I put 100 microliters of the sample into each cuvette and mixed it around really well. Here we go. So it's important that it's mixed super well in there. We want it to be even. And you also notice that I spray with ethanol between every sample. So the spraying with ethanol hopefully should prevent cross-contamination between the flasks. Uh, so, you know, every single step along the way you have to be incredibly anal about here and do everything exactly the same way for every single flask or you could get really awful growth curves. 
When I pull samples from the flasks, I like the pipette up and down uh, once or twice, just to make sure I uh, get what I'm trying to get. Mix that around. Another thing that I learned is, you know, a lot of times in this lab work, less is more. So if you start at a calculated OD of 0.1, I was not getting good growth curve results. But this time I started at an OD of 0.05, and the growth curves are looking good. Is it because I got better at taking OD readings, and before I was a bad scientist and now I'm a good scientist? Maybe. But that's the one big thing. That's the one big thing that I changed. And so for the rest of my life, I'm going to attribute it to starting at a lower OD. Scientists are the most superstitious people. Uh, I also have an extra cuvette. I don't know if you noticed that extra cuvette there, but that one is the blank. So we're going to need to blank the machine. So it's important to have that sample. It's not really a sample. It's a lack of a sample. All right, last pair. So this last pair is the wild type strain. So there are no mutations. This is all Uroia lipolytica. Uroia lipolytica is an oleaginous yeast. It's fat, it's obese, it's chunky. Uh, so far, this growth curve has been going incredibly well. These knockouts should improve growth on acetate, so the OD should be higher for those. This shaking incubator is just fantastic. It's got the sticky pads, it's like the pizza oven style so you can pull the whole thing out. Super, super nice. Uh, for those unaware, a lot of people use either these thingers or these thingers up here. I just dropped this screw. Come here, screw. You have to screw those in and putting the flasks in those, it's just, it makes a horrific noise and they're really hard to get out and you always think you're gonna break the flask. Maybe it's just me. So let's look at a couple of the flasks here. So this is, this is the uh, wild type. Hopefully you can see that. And this is one of the mutants. This is probably at an OD of like one or two and this one's probably at an OD of like four or five. Uh, eventually you should be able to look at flasks and give a pretty good estimate of, of what the OD is. Uh, I'm not spot on, but uh, you know, it's, it's enough to guess for any dilutions that I might need to do. So we'll take these over here. Wake up computer. Okay, uh, you probably can't see the screen super well. That's okay. You just really need to see the, the technique. So, you know, I'm looking for any bubbles that might be in the cuvette and just gonna tap them to make sure that they're not in there. This machine has a little bit of wobble here, so I just push the cuvette into the corner. It's kind of important. So I'm gonna blank the machine. I'm gonna measure. We should get an OD reading of point, yeah, point oh oh one. That's about zero. So make sure there's no bubbles. Stick it in there. Measure. So that one read point three five seven. But remember, we did a dilution of ten times. So the actual OD is something like 
3.57, right? Uh, and I'm doing all of these in duplicate as well, so we should get pretty consistent results. If I'm a good scientist, enormous if. Oh, you can see that screen, huh? Okay. Cool. So the last one I got, basically, you know, after the calculation five and one, that pair has given me troubles uh, in the previous measurements. I don't know why, but that one was like 4.7 and 4.1. Again, this is after I'm, you know, doing the times 10. That one's 1 1.97. It's 2.13, those are really good. Yeah, this data is coming along together really nicely, which hasn't been true for the past three months, so this is good. I haven't been doing growth curves for three months, but you know, I feel like typically with lab work, things go really poorly for like three months and then all of a sudden they go really well for no reason for like two weeks and that's the reason we stay alive right uh, okay so these are the wild type ones these are the most interesting so that one that I estimated to be an OD of four and a half gave me a reading or four I said four or five and it gave me a reading of 2.97 and the one that I estimated to be an OD of one gave me an OD of 0.7 basically so you know I'm good at science all right so at the end of all of the samples that one has started growing that's not good at the end of the, all the samples I like to measure the blank one more time and the blank gave us 0 0.000 so that's good um, so anyway, that's it. I'm gonna analyze all this data. It looks good so far. If the data looks really good, I'll throw the graph on the screen because I'll be really, really proud. Uh, proud pop a moment. So I'm gonna throw these cuvettes away because they're single use. You can reuse them if you want, but in my opinion, it's not worth it because they're like 10 cents each. I'm sorry, sea turtles. I'm really, really sorry. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, bye.